Rev up your engine! Offshore Dave says, looking to buy a newer diesel pickup truck. Are they all junk? I love my old 04 Silverado, but it uses too much gas. What should I buy? I don't have any brand. Doesn't have to be fancy. I want it to run. Here is the problem. The new ones are going for real high technology. They are getting higher thermal efficiency, but they're doing it with very complex systems of special various thermostats and to reuse the heat. It's a great science scientific trial. But do you want to be part of a trial and you find out later the engines blow? One, stay the heck away from the Dodges because Fiat owns them and they're all Italian engines and they're junk. If you're going to buy a diesel here in the United States, I'd say get the Ford diesel. That seems to be your best bet. Just realize they're all extremely high tech these days. And if they have problems when you're out of warranty, it's going to cost you a fortune to get those things repaired. A lot of times you'd be better off getting an older one that has a new engine put in it because they were simple. Simpler. They didn't have all the crap that the modern ones have on it, and they won't be as expensive to fix when they break either. Take all that in consideration. They're complex. The new ones, doesn't matter which one you buy, they're going to be uber complex, and when they break, they're going to be real snickers, and they might break more often because of all this technology. They've only started this out within the last year or so with a lot of this thermal efficiency stuff, and who knows how it's going to hold up. I can tell you more in a few years, but right now, I'd be real leery too about buying a brand new any kind of diesel here in the United States. Now, here's why you don't believe advertising or hype. For years, I've told people, don't buy those Land Rovers or endless money pits. And then people say, oh, Scotty, you don't know what you're talking about. That was the old one. The new ones are better made. They got those new diesels that work. Here's proof that what I'm saying is right. And that Land Rover is still making junk. This is an email from one of your viewers. Scotty, I wish I would have listened to you. I bought a Land Rover Discovery that only had 12,000 miles on. I now have 15,000 miles and the warning light came on. I went to the dealer. They suggested I need a new EGR sensor fuel gasket. $1,400 to fix it. Other Discovery owners are complaining about the same thing. You're bang on these. They are endless piles of crap. What do you think I should do? Well, of course, you should have listened to me in the first place. <laughs> Not buy one of those stupid things. If it runs okay, EGR is part of the anti-pollution system. I mean, what the heck? You're from South Africa. I don't know what the pollution control laws are there. If they don't have any, it runs okay. You could just ignore the stupid thing. It just shows they still having quality control. It doesn't matter that they got bought by the Indians and now they're partly owned by the Chinese. This will show you another example of how poorly made they are. They make some of them in China, right? China is a communist country. Even in communist China, people who have bought those things went to the Chinese headquarters of Land Rover and protested this year because of bad quality of the vehicles they sold them. Now, if people are protesting in a communist country about poor products, that tells you they're making junk. So listen to Scotty people. Do not buy one of those things. They are rolling piles of junk. Doesn't matter if they're gas, diesel, old, new. They just have no quality to them whatsoever. Grant McElt says, is a 2005 Saturn Ion reliable? I found a one owner 05 Ion with 54,000 miles. Clean, he wants 4,500 bucks. Seeds decent enough. Are they junky or not? They weren't terrible cars and they weren't great cars. It's a 16 year old Saturn. They don't make them anymore. 4,500 bucks is too much. Just realize that. Some of the parts are interchangeable with GM. Some aren't. I wouldn't get more than three grand tops for that thing. They can be okay. They can run a while. They don't make them anymore. Parts reliability can be hard to find. And understand that when they don't make cars anymore, the resale value goes unless they're collector's items like, you know, Shelby Cobra or something. That's another story. The Saturn I on 2005 will never be a collector's item. So if you can get it cheap enough, yeah, I've had customers buy those things for two, three grand and be happy driving them for years. But don't overpay it. And 4,500, that's too much. It doesn't matter about the mileage. It's a Saturn. They don't make it anymore. It's 16 years old. Pay less. If the mechanic says it's okay. But I haven't checked the engine and the transmission. And if either have problems, don't buy it. Kaizen says, I removed the caliper assembly with the brakes to remove my knuckle and steering. When I install the caliper assembly, do I have to bleed the brakes even if I didn't touch them at all? Well, it depends where the air went. Now, if you watched any of my videos, what you could do is when you take the caliper off, if you disconnected the hose, you should have clamped it. They make brake hose clamps. Clamp it and then no air would get in the system. But if all you did was take the caliper off and put it to the side and didn't open the system to the air, of course, you don't have to bleed anything. The only reason you get air is because you open the system up. 
or let's say you have a brake master cylinder that's bad and it's sucking air and then it will pump air in the system if all you do is take the caliper off put it to the side then bolt it back on no you don't need to bleed the brakes only if you opened it to air and unbolted the whole thing and then of course brake fluid will leak everywhere and you'd know you got air in the system because it would just the brake fluid would leak out and the air would take its place jabram says why are american used cars so expensive versus canadian ones i live in ottawa and i can find a 2010 honda crv for 8200 bucks as i look in the american marketplace they're more expensive what's the story generally cars are more expensive in canada you guys have a bigger taxation and you end up paying more for the cars but your used car market is different your used car market people generally get less money for them maybe it's canadians like buying new ones and they want to keep up with the joneses you know <laughs> and Americans don't care as much. American used cars used to be kind of cheaper, but now due to market forces, coronavirus, the prices are getting real high and those blue book values are all made up. The companies that make the books that say what the value of the used cars are are now the companies that sell a lot of used cars. They bought it out, so it's fake information. I got a whole video on that. And in Canada, you're not as tied into the system as we are here in the United States. Your used car system is different than our car system is. It used to be you could get them a lot cheaper in the United States. States. I mean, when I was a kid growing up in Niagara Falls, New York, Canadians used to come over, buy cars in the United States and bring them over. Now, if you did it legally, yeah, you had to pay taxes and stuff. A, guy, a lot of guys would just sneak them over and do it. <laughs> you can just drive over the bridge. What the heck? I even had my brother-in-law had a Toyota van. He went to England and he ended up selling it before he came back from England to the United States. He wasn't supposed to, but hey, an English guy paid him money for it. and He got a good deal. So, you know, there's all kinds of things that go on that way. But generally, the situation in the United States is the new cars are cheaper than in Canada, but the used cars are more expensive. It's just a weird cultural thing, and that's the way it is. Kaizen says, I need help how to figure a ball joint job. I got my old ball joint out and a new one pressed in. I thought that was the hard part, but I can't get the nut on the ball joint screw. Every time I screw the bolt on, the whole ball joint rotates. Okay, I hope it's not true, but you said you had a new one pressed in. I'm assuming you paid a machine shop to do it. They might have screwed up the threads. Look at the threads when they're coming out of the ball joint they should be clean if they're all bent then they screwed it up and what you can do is get small little files i have big files in a big case of all different sizes you get the small ones and file those threads clean so they're clean again and then just in the air get your nut to go on and off and then you can put it back together again now if you have one of those stupid nuts that has the lock washer built in a plastic one there can be really hard to get on because it'll keep spinning in that case what you want to do is get yourself like a c clamp and clamp the bottom where the ball joint is in tight and when you clamp it in tight then when you screw that bolt on generally it'll go on pretty good now if you can't get it done yourself if somebody with an air impact an air impact goes and it can generally spin it on fast enough with all that torque where you can't spin it by hand fast enough or even an electric impact could spin it pretty fast you might be able to spin it on that way well if you're going to travel to canada you better watch out to make sure that your car is legal and you're not driving down the road sitting on a folding chair <laughs> Because, believe it or not, outside of Hamilton, Ontario, and Burlington, which is outside of Toronto, a man was pulled over by the police, and he was sitting on a folding chair. I guess someone stole this chair, or his chair broke, the regular car seat for the driver, and he had just a plain old folding chair, like somebody would sit on in the backyard around a table, or playing cards at a card table, and there it was. Of course, it had no seat belt. He had to be taken away. They had to tow the car away, take the plates off for operating in an unsafe vehicle that doesn't have seat belts and stuff on it. <laughs> so, you think you've seen it all or heard it all? Well, no, there's a guy in Canada who was driving his car sitting on a folding seat. It was a normal car. By the picture I'm looking at it, it wasn't rotting away and they couldn't put a seat anymore. For some reason, he was sitting on a folding chair. Who knows? Maybe he did it for a bet at university or something. I have no idea, but... <laughs> be wary what you do when you go to Canada. Don't drive up there sitting on a folding chair that doesn't have seat belts on it. There are laws for safety, and if you break them there, they take them seriously, and they will tow your car away, too, because they're not going to let you drive it home. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.